Hello there. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now up to episode three of Peaky Blinders season six, the halfway point for the final season of Peaky Blinders. We've still got the film to come out, which I'm hella excited for, like I was saying at the start of this season. Um, finally, hopefully when the film comes around, I get to react to Peaky Blinders content at the same time everybody will be watching it. I won't be delayed. So yeah, what's going on, guys? My name is Ellie Moses, a 24-year-old law and film student in Sydney, Australia. Absolutely shooting shot today. We are up to episode three of Peaky Blinders season six. I'm hoping to do this as a double upload with episode two um which i recorded yesterday and i thought was actually a good episode i'm liking seasons five and six i don't think they are as strong as seasons one to four thus far but they are still pretty solid definitely um a darker tone than the first four seasons themselves and um i saw a comment saying you know um you know the lack thereof of red right hand is possibly to signify the darker tones in season five and six because whenever you heard red right hand and whenever you know um you know, the title crawl came up with the cue or the drop of Red Right Hand, um, you know, as the song was sung, you know, it signified badass Peaky Blinders era, but we're not in, we're no longer in badass Peaky Blinders era, where I feel like in, you know, like the comment was saying, um, a darker era of Peaky Blinders, a lot of uncertainty here, and it, things could go either way um, with everything that's going on at the moment. So everything's in turmoil, um, and yeah, there's a massive plan, there's a massive script, um, Tommy Shelby's trying to write for the third act, but as we're seeing with Ruby now, um, things aren't going according to plan. There are rewrites for the Tommy Shelby script. So yeah, let's see what's going to happen. This episode's titled Gold. Let's have some fun with this thing. Let's absolutely smash it. Let's go. <sighs> I wonder if the breathing now is a mixture of Polly and Grace, or is it still Grace? Your daughter has consumption. Consumption is a very infectious disease. There are procedures that must be followed. Please hand over the child. Is it? No, he's taken. Give me gentle. You still got the Black Madonna over her neck. That's my daughter. You hear me? I need to be with her. I need to be with my daughter. Come. Okay. I'll go X-ray her, but they have to X-ray us because we might have Fuck it as us, well. Fuck us, Lizzie. Fuck us. Fuck you and me. Who brought this on? We brought on this curse. Stop, Tommy. Fucking stop. They wouldn't let me pass. They wouldn't let me pass. It is not purpose to punish me. Tommy, stop it, please. All right. My husband is very sorry. Okay. My husband is very sorry. But he's calm now. He's recovering from addiction. Sometimes. <laughs> There's gonna be nothing inside. God. God knows what's inside. God help me. She has a tubercular infection in her left lung. Damn, man. I caught it quite early. Oh, that's okay. I'll do more tests. The gray man, the images she was drawing. <sighs> I'm so sorry. My dog. I won't be okay. I won't make it. I won't make it. I almost drunk a bug. Be wearing a mask. Can't strike a bargain with God. If that's I God's am. plan for the child, it's his plan. So she dresses well. Go to the door and take her coat. Yes, ma'am. Uh, make a note of the label. Of course, ma'am. This chick has been introduced 
for one episode and Diana, man, I, I can't stand it. I'm sorry. He plays the part pretty well, though, but can't stand it. I'm sorry. Like, he's got to go, blood. <laughs> Look how she's setting up the scene. No, Thomas, where the devil are you? He's going to Esme, isn't he? He said he wanted to contact her last episode anyway. My dear, you researched me and I researched you. If this was 1919, you would have come through my front door carrying a revolver and a Molotov cocktail that would happily have blown off my head. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful how time changes everything? Where is the American? He'll be here later. Where's Mosley? He heard Thomas wasn't coming, so he decided to sulk. You know how men are. Where is Thomas? His daughter is sick. Does he not employ a governess? It's a class thing. A genetic thing. <laughs> he puts his daughter's welfare before business. Even the business of changing the world. I thought today was purely social. Now that it's just you, I suppose it will be. <laughs> That's why I put it out for you to look at. According to recent interpretations, the Black Rider on 18th Dynasty vases is meant to signify approaching death. So, yes, I suppose it resembles Thomas. Hey, the Black Rider and Tommy Shelby was seen in a lot of flashbacks or a lot of scenes at the beginning of the season, I believe, riding dangerous, signifying death. Possibly Ruby as well. Who knows? A lot of the family members, or, you know, Polly said it will take one of the family members' lives. Abarama Gold went. Polly went. Is Ruby next to go? Who knows? Tommy Shelby? Who knows? Arthur? Tell me, why is he so emotionally mutilated? Oh, because he's a character in a novel, of course. One of those novels ladies like you like to read. All about wild men. <sighs> well, I don't read novels. I read only pornography and politics. These guys having a back and forth. The men shouldn't we ladies be engaging in small talk? Rap battle here. Very well. And keep it going. Small talk. There's no small talk to small talk. You know I like to fuck women as well as men. <laughs> Tommy was right. He says that everything is a circle. <laughs> Lady in Eaton Square. As coarse and honest as an Aston whore. Just realised I haven't even offered you a drink. Keep this going. I'm, I'm just kicking back and enjoying it. Keep it going. Peter, before the dreary business of changing the world begins, I want you to know something. When the time comes for the great cleansing, I myself will personally argue the case that the Jews must be dealt with, but that the gypsies should be spared. Let's drink whiskey and wait for the American... I know a lot of the fan base didn't like Linda, and I, I, I like Linda, right? But Diana, like, surely she is not held to the same level as Linda by the fan base, right? She on a she on another stratosphere of her own, yeah? Can we agree? Has this curse on Ruby got something to do with was it season two? He gave away the sapphire. Was it three or two? He gave away the sapphire um, emerald to that other witch. Oh, the fucking hell. But didn't he get rid of the curse? Unless they put the curse back on. I'm the owner of this cold pistol. And the bullet's within it. <laughs> and I'm in a hurry. Mandy comes to book a Talaki Kana sing. Esme's husband was a fucking dirty dedicoy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He was yeah, a yeah. peaky blinder. Yeah. Well, I'm the elder and more terrible. And as I said, I'm in a hurry. What is she? At least we can see Esme back. Even though... Is that her? Yeah, it She's is. She's got away, Thomas children around and if anyone's gonna give you trouble tell me show me it'll be me what do you want it's time to leave you think i'm in charge here oh i'm sure of it as my 
<laughs> Jalabri! Chevy's trashed. Tommy Shelby OBE MP. Running around the mountains in pursuit of a gypsy curse, is that it? Why does... Which had Polly deal with the spirits. Polly is dead. Why does Esme sound high? Good little blade. Still speaks to me in my dreams. It was her who told me come find you. I can tell from your reaction this is not your doing. Sorry for troubling you. Oh, is that it? Is that all we're going to get of Esme? Like, I know she doesn't like Tommy and she obviously... I can't remember her final scene before she... Obviously, I think she was cursing and cussing the whole family. But like, you knew the game you were getting into with John, all right? And you knew the game the Lee families were involved in. And, you know, death is a consequence of that game, unfortunately. It's one of the ways out. And, you know, John unfortunately, was a victim of that. But you knew the world you were involved in. You knew, as Alfie Solomon said at the end of season three, I believe, the wicked world um, that he and Tommy Shelby are involved in. Um, it's that sort of stuff. And I know it's a long time has passed since Esme has probably seen Tommy Shelby. I think like seven or eight years, I'm guessing, since the events. Oh, we had the four-year time jump. And then I'm a bit confused on the time period now. I'm sorry. Um, but she's. it's been quite a while um, you know, since the events of season four and since Esme has seen Tommy Shelby. Um, so yeah, she's still holding that grudge against him. Um, but that was basically, so he went there for nothing, all that time for nothing. And, you know, we had obviously Tommy Shelby, you know, have that God complex, I think it was in season five, like, you know, I'm not God, not yet. And, um, I feel like he's going to try and do everything he possibly can this episode. Um, you know, search all avenues, um, and, you know, um, use all resources to try and save Ruby. But unfortunately, if Ruby's times, I know she's, I know she's a little child, but unfortunately, if that's, if the, if her time's up, her time's up and Tommy Shelby ain't gonna, you know, be able to do anything. He feels he can, but unfortunately, I don't think, um, he's going to be able to do anything about Ruby. Um, you know, it's like, uh, I would say it's, it's all, it's all in God's hands at the moment. Um, I know some of you might not agree with that, but yeah, um, there's things in the universe that Tommy Shelby doesn't have control over. So yeah. I noticed as well, um, a lot of the characters when conversing with one another, I think this has got to do with this season possibly being filmed during the pandemic and during obviously, um, the social distancing, um, rules and all the sort of, um, the policies that were introduced. Um, so I find when a lot of characters, are, like they do their best in this show to separate the characters when talking to one another, because there's been a lot of, um, one-on-one -on -one conversations or characters conversing with one another this season. Um, a lot of times they're distanced and here are Diana and, um, uh, Ada a distance one another. I love Ada this episode thus far. She can easily slot back in and out um, into her role if she wants to play the Ada Thorn role. She obviously can, but if she wants to, you know, put on the Shelby gown again, she can obviously easily play it again. She she's she's always gonna have that within her. She's still got it. I love it. The butler says our American friend is parking the car. He also says in answer to your inquiry, Diana, that the coat our exotic friend is wearing is made by she. And just as I say that. <laughs> it's very expensive label. Yes, it now. is. But the perfume I can smell on you is very cheap. Really? We're going to start this in the perfume? I'm deeply, deeply annoyed that Thomas isn't here. It is a family emergency, apparently. We only have Ada, the sister. Well, You're on a mission, man. Would the sister like some more champagne? Or an invitation? <laughs> the invitation can wait. And please remember that in this moment, in this room, it is the Shelby family that holds the power because we have the information and the incentives that will make Mr. Nelson do what you require him to do. So when I speak, please keep your fucking mouths closed. Although I'm reluctant, I am actually quite good at this. <laughs> yes, I will have champagne. <laughs> <laughs> I think Mosley kind of respects that. Uh, take care of this. 
Okay, so before these dull introductions begin, I just have to tell you something that my niece Gina just told me. Oh, Jack. She said the Shelby family are all witches and sorcerers who speak freely with the dead, so who hears a Shelby? I'm a thorn, actually. <laughs> I could be a Shelby if Is I want true? to. Hmm. Gina. Hello, Ada. Sister in law. <laughs> Your oh no, sister. cousin, 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 my bad. Yes, it seems I am indeed the sister. I did some research. You're a communist once, but diamonds and lipstick now. Actually, I'm a socialist. She's Mr. Shelby's political advisor. And you, you're the future prime minister of Great Britain and its dominions. Indeed I am. And you, Lady Diana Mitford. Talk of London with her amphetamines and emeralds. <laughs> it's her sharp mind that I'm in love with. Is this Men a bore me? Is this a this Ada, session for Diana? You have a man. My husband died, but of course we speak often. <laughs> <laughs> Between this sparkling conversation, could I get a drink of some kind? So this little kid Gina, she runs out. Look at she the way Mosley looking at Gina, man. And now here we all are. Oh, Jack, please, you're so blunt. Yes, it's wonderful. A man who is not careful with his words. I'm not careful. Just say it first and then clear up the broken glass with my bare hands. Well. I don't seem to have a drink either. <laughs> I have Scotch or Irish. Thomas drinks Irish. Where the hell is he? Irish. He's been unavoidably detained. Nothing's unavoidable. His daughter is unwell. He doesn't have a wife? Whoa! You know, I did some research on you too, Mr. Nelson. Ada here is the smart one of the family. I learned that when you were young, you lost a brother and a sister to consumption. It's kind of nice. awkward. I don't know. Some of the shots here, I, I, I like it, but. Illness has entered our family. Yeah. He often has that effect on people. Hey, Ada, dictate the whole yes, scene, my maybe. Your husband has that effect on 20 million people in this country <laughs> who attend his rallies and listen to his broadcasts. It's amazing what English upper class women can do with just skin, bone, and arrogance. My brother sends his apologies for not being here and would like to invite all of you to his home for a meeting. A meeting where the real business will be done and where you can meet like minds from <laughs> Ireland. We would also like to discuss the future of Europe. But as you say, this lunch is purely social. And looking at my glass, I see I still don't have champagne. Michael told me the sister had gone straight. Yes, but her brother is the sun. The rest just orbit around him. <laughs> Gina tells me lots of things, but I want to hear it from you, Ada. What exactly does the Shelby Company Limited do? do i love a lot of the character conversations this season um and i think it's absolutely fantastic you know one of the driving forces um like i know this show came out after peaky blinders um but you know i heard someone or one of the complaints uh, I think someone told me about Shogun, which came out this year, was, oh, we never got to see the big war that was promised. I'm like, that, like the whole purpose of, you know, what uh, Toronaga was trying to do that entire show was not, was, was to avoid that war um, against everyone. And, you know, it was the character conversations that themselves that were the driving force of the show itself. You know, you better watch out what you say. You better watch what you say. Otherwise, it could cost you your head. And it was so expertly done. I loved Shogun. And this season uh, of Peaky Blinders and season five itself, uh, more season six thus far, uh, is really reminding me of that. Like, it's a lot of character conversations, but it's kind of worrying for me at the moment a little bit because although they are fantastic and I feel like the actors themselves are doing a great job and the interactions are pretty good most of the time I feel like we're at episode three in season six and not a lot has happened I feel like you know we have Amaraba Gold, Holly Gray um, and Barney die at the end of season five there's been no repercussions for the IRA uh, there's been no repercussions for the Billy Boys and Jimmy McCavin um, and Bonnie. Um, and I feel like 
even though I said last episode, I feel like Tommy's playing the long game um, in terms of like, you know, he's trying to write that final third act that will completely take out everyone and ensure he, you know, sails into the sunset. We have this unfortunate event with Ruby here. Um, like I said, we've had rewrites in his script and this is one of those unfortunate events where the higher ups, um, you know, the powers that be um, are probably going to, you know, uh, are probably going to, you know, change the entire course of Tommy Shelby plan, uh, Thomas Shelby's plan um, if Ruby does pass away or, you know, not, not completely change it, but possibly put it to a standstill. But I'm just worried going into episodes four, five, and six that they're going to rush everything possibly um, because we haven't seen Finn at all this season. We haven't Finn seen Billy this season at all because what happened... Is Billy just working with the IRA or is he still in league with the family? Like, what's happened? Like, have we chased up Finn about what happened that night? Like, what he told Billy? Um, and has there been any investigation into Billy? Like, we haven't even seen a scent of that, like a hint of that. Um, so are they completely just glossing over that? Um, it's just, yeah, I feel like they're trying to juggle a lot at the moment. And I hope they execute it well. I hope they stick the landing. But we're at episode three now of season six. And it's still just characters talking one another. And I enjoy all the character conversations. Like, I'm not saying I'm disliking season six thus far. I like it. Um, but I don't think it's just as, like, nearly as strong as seasons one's four. It's definitely darker. Um, but I just, you know, want something to happen. I want to, you know, I want it to get a move on. Um, but it seems like when it does get a move on, I hope it's not rushed because, yeah, we're awfully um, padding a lot of time with these character conversations. You can disagree with me. It's all right. But, like, I'm still liking this season. Um, Fuck! Mandy Jane's view pal of a cover. Something you should see. Someone dead. Someone grieving. A lot of hate against you. Oh, and I bet multiple curses were put on that hate. Oh, were put on because of the hate. You're to come to me, Thomas. Elby isn't here. I know. I am. Do you know where he's gone? Five days, five he's days. Up a mountain looking for a miracle. <laughs> no one is allowed to go in if he's not here. Just bring me the keys. All of the keys. <laughs> Ada, truly the MVP of this episode thus far. He still got it, like I said. Do you want tea, Mrs. Thorne? Whiskey. Mr. Shelby doesn't allow whiskey in the building anymore. <laughs> Have someone go and fetch some. <laughs> Until Mr. Shelby comes down off his mountain, I'm in charge. Yes, Mrs. Thorne. Damn, Ada with the little pocket watch? Come on. <laughs> Yo, Ada can really play this role if she wanted to. Obviously, she, does, she doesn't, and it's a temporary five-day thing, but, like, she badass it. I'm sorry. What? Mick, I've got to go. I'm the boss's sister, is it? <laughs> for the next five days, I'm not the boss's sister. I'm the boss. Where is Arthur? We locked him in the cash safe. When he gets the yams really bad, he tells us to lock him in the safe. Stop him from slipping down to Chinatown. What are the yamps? When you lose your head, you can't control yourself. Young people say it. Oh, he sleeps on the floor. We lock him in at night. On your feet. <laughs> Sit down. Nice perfume. Tommy likes you, Isaiah. I believe I'm suited to this life. <laughs> I'm not so sure about you. I was given to understand that you are no longer part of the company. Hmm. Yeah, but she's got like a... You speak well. I was going to be an accountant. But everybody said I'll be wasted accounting one day. Instead of stealing it. What's the name of that perfume? I've got a girlfriend with a birthday. <laughs> Chanel <laughs> number five. <laughs> and then I will go to Liverpool. We have opium in storage at the Salt House docks. 
Word got out among the dock workers. They started stealing cupfuls. Now it's by the bucket. By the bucket. The audacity of it. Audacity. <laughs> the sale of the stolen opium is being organised by a union convener called Hayden Stagg. In the envelope, you'll find details of where to find him and what to do to him when you do. You decided. <laughs> the name of the perfume is Know Your Fucking Place, Soldier. <laughs> Yo, I love Ada decided, running things. You'll just take a beating. And also, that you're going to take Arthur with you. Arthur, 10 days clean, I'm going to take him into a warehouse full of fucking opium. It can be your job to look after him. Will I take him at all? It's his reputation you're taking. The beating can be conducted in a civilised way. No one would dare fuck with Arthur Shelby. But they would fuck with me. Yes, ma'am. Yes. <laughs> he is Arthur Shelby. Your Isaiah... Who? I'm just Isaiah. <laughs> he was keen to learn. Ada. I'm clean. Deal with Hayden Stagg. Bring Arthur back in one piece, and in return, I won't tell Tommy that you're laying private bets on races that we've fixed. <laughs> Just trying to make a few extra pennies. <laughs> Buy that birthday present for my girlfriend. Mm. Is he going to get the name of the perfume? Here you go. What is it, man? Este Lauder, y Salaron. Like, what is it? Coco Chanel, Chanel number five. Mr. Yor, come on. Yo, I'm not gonna lie, Ada in this role is actually sick. I know it's temporary, but like, I'm enjoying the heck out of it. Like, I love it. All he wants to do is fight people and blame himself. And I've never felt so ashamed of him cry because right now I, I need a normal man. The actor who portrays Lizzie has done it's a stellar job as well. Taking away the bloody rags and watching her disappear. It's 1934, and the doctors know what it is. They know what causes it. But, oh, no, my husband, he knows better. Not a normal man, your brother. <laughs> He's up in the mountains with fucking horse thieves and sorcerers while I'm here on my own. Poor Arthur, man. It's okay, Arthur. I'll look after you. Ada said it'd be okay if I recruited my cousins off the streets of Adam Rock and looking for the big time. <laughs> they sure do look like his cousins. <laughs> so big time boys don't ask for permission. I think he means you. Let's go. You know, by the time Tommy gets back, Ruby might be gone. Right, hold up. Hold on, hold on. Listen, I gotta go right. What's your orders? I'm depending on you. You hear me? <laughs> you yourself. Any man. Any fucking man. Look like this before. Any man who comes home from a mission with all his bullets. He pays a fine. My name's Aiden Stagg. Oh! Hey, there's so many here from Birmingham looking for me. No way, Stephen Graham, let's go. I was playing football with the boys. That's some pretty good accuracy. I'm guessing you gentlemen aren't here to kick footballs. Now, we're about all the business. We like to call it Black Star business. Black Star of pub, is it? Yeah, the Black Star of pub. That's crazy seeing Stephen Graham here because I'm currently watching another show on the channel at the moment, juggling it with Peaky Blinders called Boardwalk Empire. And Stephen Graham plays another character in that show who's absolutely phenomenal. I don't want to spoil who he plays. 
Um, but the character himself who he plays has been name dropped in this show itself as well. Um, and he's absolutely phenomenal as that character. That's Bobby with a fucking drinky. Think you blind a take to the Black Star? And all your troubles are done. She sings out. I'll be on the show. Sit down, boys. I won't be for that safe there, people. I have to show me, is it? Yeah. No, comrade. Beneath your sleeves lies the truth. The marks on your arm. Yeah. Hey, he puts There's on a... Stories about you come up the canal. He puts on a Scarsa accent pretty well. Fine alone. Unless he actually is Scarsa. need a stick. I just fucking do it, Arthur. Well, for me, it was the morphine he gave us in France. I got a taste for it, aren't they? 1924, before I realised the fucking war was over. There's a warehouse full of it just across the yard there where the boys play football. And they steal it, and roll around laughing, and it floats in the air. I'm strong, comrade. Arthur, let's just fucking do it. Stay strong, Arthur. Liar. Which means that's you a beat. But it's me who feels sorry for you, Mr. Shelby, because you take your beating every hour of every day. You're rubbing it in, man. Betrays you because it demands dilution. Sometimes you want to cut a doorway on your arm so your blood can escape and leave you in blessed peace. I feel like the actor, like I said, I forgot his name, who plays Arthur's absolutely nailing this scene. It's absolutely heartbreaking. Um, that you know Hayden Stagg is laying into him here and hitting him, hitting him where it hurts. And one of the comments on my episode two reaction, you know, talked about, um, sorry, my episode one reaction. The uh, the actor who plays Arthur himself was arrested a couple months ago, um, for drug use, I believe, or intoxication. I can't believe I can't remember which one. I'm sorry. Um, but it's sad. It's sad. So clearly, he's possibly had drug problems during the filming of the show, and it's all coming out yet. Yeah, it's absolutely hitting home, and maybe that just um makes the performance all the more um convincing. I was once where you are now, aren't I? <laughs> no, if you're gonna do it, do it. But look at me as a man you can be. You tried Jesus, yeah. Yeah, he looked you up and down and he shook his head. You loved once. Your wife. Your kids. Jesus and your wife and your kids can't help you. Only you. Arthur Shelby. Only you. Don't count the days. It's futile. <laughs> you get to a hundred and then you wake up and it's fucking one again. Best scene in this episode. Mountains. Walk like it's a flat plane. Easy step by easy step. Father, just give me the fucking word, I'll fucking do it! Where's your stick, Arthur? Give me the order. Also, I'm not gonna ask you fucking twice. Leave me alone. No, no, you fucking won't. There's all I think you can stand down. No, let's go, come on. More Julia. Laura. Laura. Yeah, like I said, best entire sequence in this episode. I know it was a little cameo from Stephen Graham, but great, you know, choice of actor to convey that message to Arthur. Gypsy graveyard. I'm gonna still read the signs. No horse to go beyond here. We'll have to walk. 
I'm in a hurry, as my. You think you can make a deal even with death? Or soon you'll be in the right place to do it. The village disappeared, the church fell down, and we'll still use the graveyard. Did he call a sapphire? Oh, so it is a sapphire. Gave a sapphire to a woman called Bethany Barwell. Ten years ago. Damn. Took the stone back to her camp. I warned her about it. Yeah, he told her. Up. He told her it was cursed. Gave the sapphire to her sister, Evadne Barwell. Evadne put the stone around the neck of her daughter, little girl. Straight away, the little girl began to cough. She died that night. Seven years old. I would have buried that sapphire, man. I would have sent her into I the sun. The sapphire in the river. No one's ever gone to look for it. Yeah, let it remain that way. I'm like, guessing it's be the girl's mother who laid the curse. Like the ring of power. Only women can lay curses. Perhaps she waited till your little girl was seven. So you'd know how it feels. She will be well. And I will undo the many wrongs that I have done. Now that I'm without whiskey, I can hear the spirits clearly, and they're saying that Ruby will be well if I make amends. That is the conversation. If you want my help, I'll help you, Thomas, if you also pay me. Pay me, and I'll help you to find her. I will pay you. But I don't want money. I don't read the papers. I know there's a crash. Nothing is certain. Money loses value. Instead of money, give me gold. Gold? Yes, I will give you gold. In certain times, gold is always certain. I will give you gold. And you will help me find this woman, and she will spare my daughter. I don't think that's going to be the case, unfortunately. He's gone. She's gone. Yeah. Oh, she's damn. She's gone. She's now 570. You weren't fucking near him. Were you? Were you? I told her that you loved her. I gave her your kiss goodbye. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that was episode three of Peaky Blinders season six titled Gold. Um, I like that episode. I thought it was pretty good. Um, listen, I know I had my complaints during the episode and I still stand by those claims a little bit. Um, I, I sorry, I still stand by those claims in terms of like them trying to, um, you know, I feel like, sorry, in terms of like the season itself progressing very slowly and with this only being um six episodes or with the show itself being six episode seasons i feel like they're not covering as much ground in the episodes like a lot of the episodes um a, a lot of the episodes i feel like episodes two and three in particular have been a little bit of a slog sometimes like in seasons one to four even five at points um you know, the episodes would go by pretty quick. Like I'd be watching myself. Um, I'd be, sorry, recording these episodes and I wouldn't, you know, get a taste for the runtime at all. I'd be like, oh damn, we only got this long left in the episode. Whereas this and last episode, I feel like tended to drag a little bit. Don't get me wrong. 
there were some fantastic scenes in it and this episode had absolutely um some heartbreaking sequences especially at the end there with ruby being um you know um ruby uh passing away and obviously the scene with um uh, arthur in the warehouse was absolutely phenomenal ada as well this episode was great um but i just feel like in terms of like the overall um story with what tommy's trying to play at here i feel like listen he's trying to like i said time and time again he's trying to write this massive third act that covers all grounds and to ensure the safety of his family for the future uh then obviously this thing with ruby was a little bit of a hiccup but like i said during the reaction nothing seems to be in play for the ira or like maybe there is in the long term but i just hope it isn't resolved too quickly um because i feel like they might rush it um but yeah the ira um there seems to be no consequences there especially what happened with polly and abarama gold um even oswald mosley what's the larger plan there um the the billy boys um and jimmy mctavern we haven't seen any like finn um or billy um michael wasn't in this episode um yeah so i hope i hope they manage to stick the landing um but i have my doubts but still it's 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 some great stuff but i don't think it's as strong as seasons one to four but i'm not i'm not, like i hope you guys don't think i'm outright hating on this season and completely bashing it i just do think um episodes two and three were a little bit of a slog or a little bit of a chore to get through like they're taking their time quite a bit especially for a final season um of the Peaky Blinders, um, but there are still fantastic scenes in there. The performances um, are just as strong as ever. Um, you know, the cinematography itself remains great. Um, but yeah, just sometimes in terms of like progressing the overall storyline, they are taking their time quite a bit. So I hope you guys are still enjoying these reactions. It's been your boy Lee Moses. I still cannot go wait to get into episodes four, five, and six. Um, it's been your boy Lee Moses, like I said. It's, this is uh, my reaction to Vicky Blinders, episode three um, of season six. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care. God bless. Peace.